Anyway, my name is Brandon Talbot, uh, but I'm going to actually introduce this guy right here, Arlo. So downstairs is Competitive Edge Fitness. How many people know Arlo already? So the vast majority of you. Okay, the introductions are easy. Um, but he owns Competitive Edge Fitness. He's been around for 11 years. Yep. He's a licensed massage therapist, and he's a certified strength and conditioning specialist, which is kind of an unusual combo. Most physios don't do that kind of work, which is awesome. That's what makes him really good. Um, and he's a beefcake. <laughs> he's flipped a 1,200 pound tire. He does all sorts of stuff, but he, uh, he's also into jujitsu. He's a purple belt in jujitsu. And, and am I missing anything? I don't think so. Anything else is good? <laughs> anyway, we should, we should have a good day. For sure. Um, yeah, we've got it tentative, tentatively scheduled for 4 p.m., but it might go a little quicker. It might take a little bit longer. I'm sure most of you are like, can we please go with the former? Anyway, uh, yeah, do you have you got it? I'm going to introduce oh. Brandon over here. <laughs> so, how many of you know Brandon or have seen Brandon <coughs> Anybody seen Brandon jump? No. Or played volleyball. And, uh, <laughs> <No>. Okay. <laughs> so, Brandon, I first met on the volleyball court a um, long time ago. I've known him for years. Yeah. And it's, it's, he's a fun player to watch just because he's so explosive. He's so quick and he just, he just jumps out of the... How's it going, man? Good. How are you doing? Doing good. <laughs> Welcome. You're, you're, you're good. We're doing intros. Yep. Perfect so, time. So, Brandon jumps higher than anybody I know. He actually... <laughs> Last year was it set the the Guinness Book of World Records single leg box jump, which was awesome. And one thing I really love about Brandon is he has huge aspirations and huge goals. And he was telling me last year, like everybody makes New Year's resolutions or or goals for the year. And he told me what his were, and I they were like out of this world. And one of them was to set a world record and and various things. And I'm just like, wow, that's incredible. And that. And a lot of people have big dreams that they just don't follow through with, but Brandon actually does. He does everything in his power to, to actually make it happen. And Your intro is way better than mine. No, no, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's something I've admired about Brandon for a long time, and just watching him play and playing against him, it's always depressing when we, when we draw him in the tournament bracket. But Sorry, man. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's, he's a crazy explosive guy and super smart. Like, I didn't realize it until just recently, I knew that he was always on the competitive edge of sports performance and he knew what he was doing. He was training with top people and, and I didn't realize until just recently that he is, uh, he's a certified uh, performance enhancement specialist through the National Academy of Sports Medicine. And I didn't know that. I knew he was smart. Wow. Not really. It's just, <laughs> anyway, it's um, yeah. And the more I talk to him, the more I understand of just how much he knows. I'm super impressed by by Brandon, and I'm really excited to to share the stage with him today. Sweet, this Brandon. So that was maybe too long. But so here's what we're going to start with. I want everybody to take a piece of paper, and everybody knows what a triangle is, right? A triangle. Oh. Yeah, you probably do. How much do you want this triangle? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So, your task is in the next 20 seconds to draw as many triangles as possible. Go! I've seen this drill before. <laughs> do they have All right, to be, time. Do they have to be isolateral? No, they don't have to be. Oh, crap. Who got more than 10? Jim, nice. And Shane, yes. Who has the most? They, they don't look good. <laughs> That's all right. They don't have to look good. Okay, quite a few, quite a few triangles. So everybody knows how to draw a triangle, right? Everybody knows what a triangle is. Everybody knows what the objective is. What if there were a way that you could do it that would be more efficient, get your results quicker, and uh, say, for example, we draw little squiggly lines. These are going to be terrible triangles, but it's, a, it's just an example. And then a line over top and a line over bottom. How many triangles does that make? Really, really fast. You can do dozens, right? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can also do stars. If I remember right, a star has like eight triangles in it. So there's various ways to achieve results and to get the results that you're looking for. But if you know the system, if you know how the best way to do it is, um, 
you're going to be a lot more effective. That's our goal today, is to show you that system, Best way what we do. Charts. That's right, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. So, so we're going to take explosive power and just volleyball performance, athletic performance in general, strength, power, agility, speed, and we're going to try and show you the most effective way that we've found in our experience of how to do that. So yeah, this might be a little biased to, to volleyball, just it, it what you did, but the, the principle, it's a principle. Principles apply to pretty much anything other than maybe, well, even some of it's going to apply to the triathlete, the endurance athlete. So, yeah, for sure. Um, do you want to man the helm over here? I will, Flip slides for me, and I'll actually come back here and kind of back to that. talk about it. So I wrote this as like I was actually writing stuff, and then I realized that I'm presenting to people, so that might actually be kind of weird if I read it verbatim. <laughs> But that's maybe what we're going to do anyway. Let's see. There should be. You know, I don't know. I think it's Oh, there's, there's an error. I wouldn't hit play because it'll like. Right, right. All right, so we're going to talk about periodization. Periodization, simply put, is just we're trying to plan our year <clears throat> as effectively as we can for optimum performance. And so that's how do we break down our off season, our pre-season, our in-season training, and even that, even the transition phase uh, to get the most out of our, our bodies. Um, for us volleyball players, especially for beach, right now is the off season. Um, and then starting in March, April, that's when we hit the season. So we need to plan uh, the best way to accomplish that. If you wanna hit that next one, Arlo. So oh, there, there we go. There's the definition of periodization. Um, did we get those slides or no, not yet? We have some of them. They're not stapled yet. All right. right, so we've got every every slide we've got in a pack will be given to you. We have them, they're just not stapled. Hey buddy. We'll staple them in the back. Yeah, so you got that. There's the definition of periodization. Let me flip this next one. And when you guys have questions, fire them off. So don't just like hold it and then we're more than willing to discuss. So what are these aspects of training that we're talking about? Tudor Bumpa, he's kind of considered the godfather of periodization. And in his book, Periodization Training for Sports, he defines distinct areas that make up a yearly training program. Those are anatom anatomical adaptations, hypertrophy, strength, conversion of power, and then there's another one, that's the transition, and uh, you can hit the next one for me. Thanks, Arlo. So anatomical adaptations, uh, as the name implies, is we're trying to prep the athlete for bigger, heavier, more intense lifting. Um, this is the first part of the off season. This is where we're increasing what some people would call general physical preparedness, or GPP, but Soft tissues, your connective tissues, they don't heal or strengthen and improve as fast as skeletal muscle. So we want to make sure that we focus on that first so that those things aren't damaged when we actually get into some of the heavier training. Does that make sense to everybody? So this usually consists of pretty easy circuit training. Um, 50 to 60% of body weight is typically what I use to do this and it's like four sets of 10. It's more of that like bodybuilder-ish kind, of, uh, kind of workout. Um, I don't have an example of that, but I'm, I can pull one up if you guys need it. Um, some of the other things that you're trying to do is you're trying to improve your aerobic capacity during the space. Um, we talked about the uh, tendons, ligaments, and joints, but that's, that's the big thing. We're trying to increase aerobic capacity and soft tissue strength, connective tissue strength. Hypertrophy, um, this is simply growing your muscle, increasing muscle size, cross-sectional area of muscle. Um, this is kind of that typical bodybuilding style, lots and lots and lots of volume. Hypertrophy, however, isn't necessarily advantageous for every athlete. Um, <clears throat> it's specific to your sport. Sean does skeleton, he's got like the right body size. However, if Sean was gonna be a brake man for a bobsled, he's gonna need to look like Emmett. And that's gonna require a ton of hypertrophy, an extra like 30 pounds. 
for volleyball players, your goal isn't getting as big as you can unless you lack the necessary muscle to keep your joints safe. So hypertrophy is something that can be excluded if it's not needed. Um, the length of time that you're usually training in hypertrophy is anywhere from like four to eight weeks typically, just a month to two months. Did you give a time frame on the first one, Brandon? No, um, it's about the same, about four weeks. Sorry, I did not. But you're looking at about four weeks, three to four sessions a week to fill anatomical adaptations. And uh, hypertrophy is about the same, about four, four sessions a week. Hypertrophy, I didn't make this point, and I definitely should. Hypertrophy is governed by volume. So if you want to get bigger, it's quite simple. You need to lift around 70 to 80% of your one rep max um, for a lot of sets and a lot of reps. That's, that's what governs hypertrophy, is just simple volume. All right, strength. When we refer to strength in training, we, uh, in the training regard, we are specifically referring to the amount of force one can produce. There are three subsets of strength that we're gonna focus on today. Absolute strength, and that's the ability for an athlete to exert maximal force regardless of their body weight. So <clears throat> that would be like the absolute strength of a guy named Brandon Lillies, like 350 pounds, deadlifts like 800, 900 pounds. His absolute strength is way more than mine because he can lift an actual amount that's bigger than like what I can do. Now our relative strength, that's referring to the ratio between our absolute strength and our body weight. So if he deadlifted 900 pounds at a body weight of 300 pounds, he's got a relative strength of three to one. Whereas I don't, <laughs> I'm much smaller. I'd be closer to like two and a half to one. So even if we looked at relative strength, he would be superior to me as well. And then maximal strength is just the highest amount of force we can produce via the neuromuscular system during maximal contraction. And that's where you get that one rep maximum. So periodization, especially when it comes to strength, power, and speed, we use that one rep maximum a lot. That's the thing that kind of governs how our workouts are going to be planned. Conversion of power. Uh, Explain simply, power is speed or force times speed. So I want to produce the maximum amount of force in the smallest amount of time. Uh, an increase in force or an increase of speed, either one is going to increase your power. So if you stayed at the same weight, like if you could squat 200 pounds, but you can squat 200 pounds and in a second and you decrease that time to production into a half a second, like if you had a force plate and you could do that, you're gonna increase power. Or if you increase strength and you stay at the same speed, you're still increasing power. Does that make sense? Everybody's solid on that? All right, go for it, Arlo. Speed and agility, speed is defined as the rate at which someone or something is able to move or operate and agility is the ability to move quickly and easily. Um, my, this is just my personal opinion, I definitely think speed and agility are kind of a subset of power. If you're going to move extremely fast, and we're talking linear speed, it requires a tremendous amount of power. This is where me and Emmett would geek out. Linear speed's fun. Uh, so the average human produces 600 pounds of force in, it's almost a second. If we were talking track, like if we were gonna run a 40, the average human is producing 600 pounds of force and they'll do it in a half a second to a second. Usain Bolt, you know, fastest man alive, produces 2,800 pounds of force and he does it in less time than you can blink. So 0.128 I think is what they clocked him at. Like if you literally put him on a track with cement blocks under him, he would break cement blocks. So that's how much force he has going into the track. Which is kind of crazy. So there's some power. But also if you watch people that move laterally really, really well, guys like uh